Hey guys, I wanted to introduce you to the uh, idea I had for this week. You see, I was uh, looking uh, across some stuff that my son had out, and I came across this old motorcycle that um, didn't start off like this. It was actually in pieces when it arrived. They, we got it for Christmas, and I had to help him put it together. And one of the things I found was so frustrating with having to do that was that the instructions just weren't very clear. They didn't seem to be very well thought out. Um, so I had a hard time actually uh, figuring everything out at first, and then I had to kind of play it by my, or figure things out on my own as to how it would work. So then I started thinking about, can we do better giving instructions? Can we write better instructions? And that's when I also came across um, a book that I've been reading to him on a kind of steady basis. It's called The Most Dangerous Book for Boys. Now, girls, don't freak out, because this book and what I have in mind is something that is just as applicable to girls as it is to boys. But I came across this one passage talking about building the world's greatest paper airplane. And I started thinking, that could be a great challenge. Everybody has paper lying around. You all know basically how to build airplanes, right? Or do you? Can you build a better airplane? Now, I know the weather today wasn't all that great, but you have the week to work on this, and this is what I want you to do. Come up with a paper airplane that you think will work really well. Try and make it so that it can at least sail for 15 to 20 feet or further. I think the world record is close to a... Um, I'm not even sure. I think it's 150 to 200 feet, something like that. It's pretty far. But what I want you guys to do is not only build a good paper airplane or design one, but I want you to work on how you would tell someone else how to build that same paper airplane. So you're going to have to come up with drawing and writing out the instructions for that design. That means you're going to have to both give me drawings, label those drawings, and also write a description of how you would build that paper airplane. One that is clear enough that anybody could pick it up, any child, you know, from maybe first grade up, could read it and be able to understand it and be able to re replicate your paper airplane. That is your challenge. Okay, let's go back over what I was asking you guys to do. First of all, your guiding question is, can you design and build a paper plane that has the ability to fly up to at least 15 feet? Your requirements are this. One, student must have a photo of paper plane that has been built. So in other words, once you've built your plane, I want you to take your phone or any kind of camera and photograph it. You can submit this into Google Classroom. Secondly, you must show a short video of the plane while it's in flight and I want you to measure the distance that it's flying. So if it does get beyond 15 feet we have definitive proof that it has done so. If it falls short of 15 feet that's okay if you want to rework this as many times as you have to to try and finally get a plane that gets to 15 feet that's great. Now thirdly you are going to have to both write out and illustrate directions for how to build the plane that you've designed. Make sure that they are clear to understand. It also, fourthly, must have no less than five steps in that description on how to build your plane. So step one should tell both how you're gonna fold the paper the first time, how many inches it's gonna be folded. Is it gonna be folded in half? Is it gonna be folded in quarters? How do you plan on um, folding the plane to make it accurately fit your design. Now if you look right here I have included several examples of illustrations for your directions. In this case I've shown a piece of paper that is being folded in half kind of like a hot dog bun. Now you can see the serrated line in the middle where it's a dotted line showing where the fold is taking place and I'm showing arrows demonstrating from which edge goes to which edge. Those are the kinds of things that you can do in your illustrations to show how to actually build your plane. Uh, the second illustration is going to give you another example of like where do you go from step to step. Like in this step I'm showing you how to basically 
draw as though only one part of a page is being folded and what I would want you to include that I don't have included in here are dimensions. How many inches am I folding from uh, the dotted line? How far is the dotted line from the edge of the paper? Those are things that you probably want to include in order to help whoever is trying to build your plane to know exactly where to fold from and where to fold to. And lastly, on this last illustration you'll see that I've taken, once again, it's just a lot more of the same stuff. Now you can do your written portion in paragraph form. You don't have to do it uh, on the page itself like this. However, that can be very, very helpful, especially for a younger audience to have shorter sentences, shorter words with a clear picture drawn for them. Remember, you have to have at least five steps, no less than five. All right, guys, get to it.